Does this dinosaur graveyard reveal their final day on Earth? An expert explores the evidence, and this is by Michael G. Benton, Professor Vertebrate Paleontology, University of Bristol in the UK, on the conversation. So what happened at their extinction? Buried in the rocks in North Dakota lies evidence of the exact day the dinosaurs were obliterated from the planet some 66 million years ago. That's the claim of paleontologist Robert De Palma and colleagues whose work was captured by the BBC in its recent landmark documentary, Dinosaurs, The Final Day with David Attenborough. For the last 10 years, De Palma has focused his work on fossil-rich site, which he has named TANIS, T-A-N-I-S, in North Dakota's Hell Creek Formation. And since 2019, he and his colleagues have put forward some very strong claims about what TANIS tells us about the end of the Cretaceous period. De Palma believes that Tanis is a mass graveyard of creatures killed during the asteroid strike. This is about 66 million years ago. There is no doubt that an asteroid led to the mass extinction of non-avian dinosaurs and at least 50% of other species 66 million years ago, but there has been some controversy around De Palma's claim that the site documents the very day that the asteroid struck and reveals direct evidence of the very last dinosaurs on Earth. So let's take a look at what we know about this most important time in our planet's history and what remains uncertain. The huge asteroid collision. When the asteroid impact theory was first proposed in 1980, there was no crater. The only evidence was two sites with substantial enrichment of iridium, an element that arrives on Earth's surface from outer space, in the rocks exactly at the level of the end of the Cretaceous. And now there are hundreds of places worldwide showing the iridium spike at what is known as the KPG Cretaceous Paleogene Boundary, a geological signature in the sediment. And then in 1991 came the huge breakthrough. The Chicxulub Crater was found in what is now the Yucatan Peninsula in southern Mexico, of course, under underwater. At 110 miles wide and 12 miles deep, the crater shows that a huge six mile wide asteroid, can you imagine, huge thing, crashed into the sea. Its force was so great that it unleashed huge tsunami waves, as well as massive amounts of rock debris and dust containing iridium into the atmosphere. It also triggered a powerful heat wave. Most experts agree that all life within around a thousand miles of this collision would have been wiped out instantly. But Tannis was more than 1,800 miles away. And up until now, there was no evidence of the very last dinosaurs. So what's the basis for De Palma's groundbreaking revelation that Tannis finally prov provides the elusive evidence of the dinosaurs last day? Asteroid evidence at Tannis. There's little doubt that the Tannis site lies close to the end of the Cretaceous period because De Palma has identified the iridium layer immediately above the fossil bed, which places it at the KPG boundary. He also has presented some compelling pieces of evidence that the site marks the exact day the asteroid struck. First, there are the ancient channels in the sedimentary rock at Tanis. These are evidence of huge standing water or sage waves which engulf Tanis. At that time, North America was divided by a great seaway that passed close to the Tanis site. The sage waves would have run up the creeks and out again several times, mixing fresh seawater to create the waves. The ground-borne shock waves from the asteroid impact, which caused the devastating water surges, could readily travel through the Earth's crust from the impact site to Tanis. When the asteroid crashed into Earth, Tiny ejector spherules, glassy beads about one millimeter wide, were formed from melting, mol melted molten rock and were able to travel up to around 2,000 miles through the atmosphere because they were so light. Astonishingly, De Palma found these glassy spherules at the site and also in the gills of sturgeon fossils which occupied the Tanis streams. He believes these spherules were produced by the Chicxulub impact because of their shared chemistry with some even encapsulating 
fragments of the asteroid itself. If this is true, their occurrence at Tannis would indeed confirm that they mark the actual day of impact because the spherules would have fallen to the ground within hours of that impact. Tannis fossil findings from decades of study of the rocks and fossils at Hell Creek Formation, we know that Tannis was a warm and wet forest environment with a thriving ecosystem full of dinosaurs, pterosaurs, that's flying reptiles, turtles, and early mammals. Although they are yet to be described in detail, De Palma and colleagues reveal some incredible new fossils of animals, and he believes they could well have died on the day of the impact itself due to their location in the doomed Tannis sandbank. First, there is an exceptionally preserved leg of the herbivore dinosaur Thessalosaurus, which shows not only the bones, but also the skin and other soft tissue. But that's not all. There is a pterosaur baby just about to hatch from its egg, and some incredibly well-preserved triceratops skin, which is an extremely unusual find. Even more astonishingly, there is a turtle impaled by a stick, which De Palma believes could be evidence of a tragic death in the turbulent siege waves set off by the impact. De Palma's final claim is that the impact and final day occurred in May based on microscopic geochemical analysis of growth rings in the fin spines of the fossil sturgeon. The bones show seasonal banding, where bones grow rapidly when food is abundant and slowly when conditions are poorer, so often, summers are shown to be a wide, pale band and winters by a narrow, dark band. The last banding cycle in the sturgeon confirms it died in May, and a further study this year has confirmed that this. So why the uncertainty? There's no doubt that the Palmas claims have been controversial since they were first presented to the world in 2019, probably because the announcement was in the New Yorker magazine rather than a peer-reviewed journal. But the findings about sage waves were then published in an academic paper only a month later, and most geologists were convinced. It's true that the fossils which were revealed for the first time in the BBC documentary, along with the evidence that the glass spherules at Tanis are linked to the Chicxulub impact, have yet to be published in scientific journals where they would be subject to peer review. But experience shows that most of what De Palma has revealed in the past has been backed up subsequently by peer review papers. Over the past two years, I worked as one of the independent scientific consultants to the BBC, verifying the claims as they made the documentary. Both I and my colleagues and many other experts are satisfied that the Tannis site probably does reveal the very last day of the non-avian dinosaurs. And of course, as we all know, the impact of the asteroid went far beyond that one day. It led to a freezing dark planet on a global scale, lasting for days or maybe weeks, and from this mass extinction worldwide, the age of the mammals emerged. And this is from The Conversation by Michael J. Benton, Professor of Vertebrate Paleontology, University of Bristol of the UK. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.